Here's a video on one sample Z test for proportions. Now, in um, pro one sample Z test for proportions, you'll be dealing with categorical data. So we're no longer in these types of questions dealing with quantitative data, all right, things that we can measure or quantities, but rather uh, items that fit into a category which we will use percentages to describe. So here is our example. A large city's department of motor vehicles claim that 80% of candidates passing the drive or 80% of candidates pass the driving test. But a newspaper reporter's survey of 90 randomly selected local teens who had taken the test found that only 61 found only 61 who passed. Does this finding suggest that the passing rate for teenagers is lower than the DMV reported? So um, first hints that this is a uh, proportion problem is that we see 80% Okay, that's usually a test. We have no mean, we have no standard deviation. They give you a total N and then a number of successes, 61 out of 90. So that tells us that it is a one sample Z test for proportion. So the first thing we're going to do is walk through the hypotheses. Now, these questions have the same four steps. Uh, there's just a few differences. So the null hypothesis in this case is that P equals 80%. So again, null hypothesis, no change. If there's no change for the percentage of passing for teenagers, then it will be the same as 80%. That's what that first line means. We're going to test the alternate. Does this finding suggest that the passing rate for teenagers is lower okay, than 0.80? And of course, we must identify what P is. It's the uh, passing rate of a driver's exam driving test. Okay, that's step one. So the main differences there are that um, we're using P's instead of mu's. Second step, we check the conditions. All right, the first one's the same, SRS. And it says randomly selected in the problem. So that is stated in the problem. And again, we ho-hum over it, but it's really important uh, in accurate data. I don't want to go to, um, you know, I don't want any bias in my sample and then my numbers are no good. The second one is normal, same as before. The main difference here is that we're using NP greater than or equal to 10 and N1 minus P greater than or equal to 10. And again, that's the number of expected successes. So out of N is 90, so out of 90 kids, we would expect 80% to pass, which is 72 successes, and out of 90, we would expect 20% to not pass, which is 18, and both of those are over 10, so that's good. And the last one we check is independent. And that is the population Uh, greater than or equal to 10n, 10 times 90 is 900, and we can go ahead and say that the um, there are more than 900 teenagers in this city. Okay, now I move on to my favorite part, the calculations. Okay, few differences here. One in the formula. Okay, it is a one sample z test. One sample Z test proportions. Okay, uh, we're going to use the formula P hat minus P over standard deviation, which is P one minus P over N. And again, that is on your formula sheet. We can also call this P hat minus P over the standard deviation of p hat as long as you calculate that off to the side somewhere which we pretty much do anyways okay we take our graph we label the middle um, if there's no change the passing rate should be eighty percent uh, we had a p hat of sixty one out of ninety which is point six seven eight so that's going to be somewhere down here, six, seven, eight. 
Again, that's my P, that's my P hat, and I'm trying to get that P value right there. So, I'm going to recalculate my standard deviation. It's going to be the square root of 80%. Remember, always using P in this case because we know P over 90, and that standard deviation is going to be about 0.042. And I'm going to plug that into my Z-score formula. Z equals 0.678 minus P over that standard deviation that we calculated before. Again, a lot of this process is a, a review. We get negative 2.90, and when I use my calculator, I get a p-value of 0 0.002. And remember, I'm using normal CDF to get that p-value. I don't have to double it because it's not two-tailed. Okay, that's a really, really small p-value. We're using alpha equals 0.01. So right off the bat, we can go to our conclusion. At alpha equals 0.01. And say, uh, obviously the p-value is way less than alpha. Well, not way less, but less. So we will reject the null hypothesis p equals 0.80 at alpha equals 0.01 whoop I don't know what happened there alpha equals 0.01 significance level whoops not period why since the p value is less than alpha, 0 0.002 is less than 0 0.01. So we said the what, we're rejecting. We said the why, the p-value is less than alpha. And now we apply the context of the problem. So if we go back up, it says, does this finding suggest that the passing rate for teenagers is lower than the DMV? So again, we're rejecting the null hypothesis. All right. And we believe that this is true. Okay, we can never accept the no, but we're going to reject it. And we say that uh, we have evidence that the passing rate for teenagers is whoops less than the DMV's overall 80%. Okay, so you can see a lot of similarities in these problems. Um, the same four steps, we got the hypotheses, we got the conditions, we got the calculations, we got the conclusion. We just have a slightly different formula and a little bit different wording.